Let me start with India, because we've talked a lot about China. In the Chinese economy, it's slowing down some of the things. India is a very different story, it looks like. I mean, in fact, what I read was they're estimating the GDP growth may be as high as 7.5 percent, higher than China's. It's the seventh largest economy in the world. So, so how are things looking to you in, in, in India? Uh, I think things are looking much better in India than what currently than what they were say 18 months ago because I remember 18 months ago it was one of the fragile five economies. Uh, from there on actually the macroeconomic indicators have improved substantially. Current account deficit is better, fiscal deficit is under control, inflation has come a lot under control and again while the monsoons have been a little tricky the government has done a lot about managing food supplies and so on so inflation is under control. Interest rates are coming down. Uh, you see, you know, increase in production of cars, commercial vehicles, mining activity and so on. So I think there's a huge uptick. Uh, the real uh, movement in the economy is now likely to come because of the government spendings going up as well. So there's a thrust on highways, there's a likely thrust on railways, defense and so on. In terms of movement in the economy, are you seeing movement in terms of income inequality? Because the divide in India is massive. And for you, in a private bank perspective, clearly you are dealing with the most, the wealthiest. Uh, so while the divide exists in a country like India, I think the biggest thing that's happening today is a whole lot of efforts around financial inclusion and around skilling, uh, you know, people so, so as to make them uh, more eligible or capable of, of generating livelihoods. So what the government has done is what we call the jam trinity, which is the jandhan, the aadhar, and the mobile. That is, we have opened as the banking industry 180 million bank accounts in the last 12 months <laughs> for the unbanked people. 80 million bank accounts. Yes. <laughs> and then we back it up. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah, absolutely, it is. And then we back it up with the unique identity that the government is uh, giving to every individual in India. And then we combine that with direct benefit transfers of subsidies. And that kind of brings, about, brings in so many of these million people in well, the economic activity. So I didn't know what this is. This unique identity. Is it a card? How uh, does, how it's does... actually just a number. It's a number. It's a number. But how many people is that when you give them a unique uh, identity? So, so it's been given to almost the entire population now. But since now the, even the unbanked people have this unique identity, right. it's possible for banks to open a bank oh, account oh, for oh. them. But, but this, this looks like a, a, a large opportunity for Western companies, investment and things like that. As I say, it appears to be growing faster than China. It's the seventh largest economy in the world. At the same time, the World Bank ranks India as 142nd, I believe, out of 189 countries. China's 90. So you're 50 full place behind. What accounts for that and what can be done for it? Uh, so as you're saying, I think the biggest potential is about investing and, and the requirement to invest, the requirement to create infrastructure, the smart cities, the make in India and so on and so forth. Um, I think government really rea realizes that we are right down there as far as the ease of doing business is concerned. So uh, two things, one is at the central level itself a lot of activity is going on in terms of moving a lot of decisions online, transparent and so on and so forth. That's one. The second is the government, the central government has started now actually this competition of ranking different states uh, about the ease of doing business. So there are uh, more than 100, uh, you know, or actually 190 points on which these states are ranked and the states are now competing with each other to get better in ease of doing business. And I think that should make a whole lot of difference. I want to bring in a Twitter question because you mentioned earlier inclusion from Zari Gill. How can your bank increase access of rural women to banking? So we've been doing that uh, actually in a big way. Uh, the way we do this, especially for rural women, is through the self-help groups. So, uh, you know, there are in, in, uh, in India, in rural India, there are groups of 10, 20 women who come together, who pool their savings, who then think of livelihood opportunities and take micro loans from the banks. And we have even, as a private sector bank, we have uh, kind of assisted more than 1.3 million women just through this self-help group initiative which helps them actually pool their savings and, and increase their livelihoods by taking micro loans. Well to those women and women around the world what an inspirational story you are. Time magazine last year named you one of the most 100 most influential people in the world but what's your story within the bank? You joined at the age of 22. What was your job then? 
I joined as a management trainee and uh, I was doing project appraisals, looking at projects that are set up in India uh, because we were a financial institution giving loans to set up those projects. Uh, but from then on, you know, the ICICI actually diversified substantially. We moved into retail consumer banking. So I had the opportunity of setting up the retail consumer banking for, for the bank. And then we globalized. So I was setting up the international operations for the bank. And you know, I also looked at the, uh, the control and the CFO functions. And, and that's how I moved up. Can I just ask, does it surprise you then, when you look at ba global banks or, or banks here in the United States, that there is not a single one having a woman as a CEO, uh, it, or has it, there ever been? It, it really does. Actually, when I sit on uh, you know, many of these international forums around banking, there's hardly any woman there, and I'm, I'm just maybe one or at the most two out of the 40, 50 global bankers that sit there. So I think India is actually doing much better in this respect than the rest of the world.